Hey kiddies, it's Triple Future Tuesday once again, and this week we're going to look at big budget student films. I was in the theater watching one of the movies on this uh, Triple Feature, and it occurred to me, like, the director is established. He has had success before on a movie that is just very polished, very good looking. That was his first movie, and then this is the second one. And this is not to say that I didn't like the second one as much. I enjoyed very uh, a lot, but there was a lack of polish and an experimental quality to it that made me that made me thought that like like this is the movie you make in co in film school that gets the movie producers excited and then they give you the money to make what was this director's first movie and then ironically it's everything is reversed so it got me thinking about other movies from fairly established directors where, uh, but later in their careers where they like really go nuts on something and just throw everything at it because you can tell they're having fun and uh, trying different things, but it's like, shouldn't you have done this before? And how did you get people to give you as much money as you, you're getting for this movie? Because clearly this movie looks great, but huh. So our menu is uh, going to go slightly, it's going to go, we'll, we'll go in reverse chronological order just so I can explain the movie I was just, you know, talking around. Our, our menu is going to include The Lighthouse, Kishern, and Pink Floyd's The Wall. Robert Eggers made The Witch, aka The Vivitch, the uh, New England folk tale about a uh, family of religious morons that uh, move to the woods having, you know, pissed off the Puritans and uh, then re then actually run into the witch that like they uh, you know had always been afraid of and everything is terrible the movie is precise it is very well paced and you can tell there's a plan and a purpose to every shot every performance in it and that's why it was kind of crazy to see the lighthouse which again I like the lighthouse is a very interesting movie. I like it a lot. I, I'm gonna need to see it again before I can determine like is it a good movie or not. It's definitely interesting, which puts it very much in favor of uh, good. Oh, by the by, spoilers for this movie since you know it's a year old, but you know I haven't talked about it yet. So the lighthouse spoilers could be here. Our, uh, is about Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe going out to the titular lighthouse to stay on the island with the lighthouse, keep the lighthouse in good working order, and turn it on every night for, uh, I believe their contract is for about a month. Willem Dafoe is the older, more experienced lighthouse keeper. Uh, Robert Pattinson, this is his first time working at the lighthouse, and uh, Willem Dafoe gives him a rough time of it the whole time, just making him do all of the scut work exclusively while Willem Dafoe drinks and takes care of the actual light. Now, uh, since it's a movie about two guys in isolation for uh, 30 plus days before, you know, a storm inevitably shows up and makes them have to stay longer while their food is running out, and uh, again, one of them is Willem Dafoe, both of them go completely batshit insane before the end of the movie. What's crazy, or what makes it, you know, extra weird is that it's filmed in black and white, which that's usually a telltale sign of a... Uh, college student production like uh like say david cronenberg's uh, early work because it's cheaper to develop black and white film but it's also shot in a peculiar aspect ratio i think it's something like a 16 9 or 9 1 or something like that it's very it, it, it's a box instead of you know the wider rectangular look the film is very grainy. It's not like there. It's not like there's no dialogue in the film. There's a lot of talking between Defoe and Robert Pattinson, but most of it is kind of crazy nonsense. A lot of the plot is left for interpretation, and there's you know moderate horror elements throughout the whole thing. So the whole time I'm watching it, it's just like this. These movies, The Witch and The Lighthouse, appear to have gone in reverse chronological order because this is the movie you make before, like, that shows all the potential and the promise and everything because it's a very interesting, very good movie. But then you'd come back with The Witch and you're like, wow, yeah, this. It's as if, like, Martin Scorsese made Taxi Driver and then made Mean Streets. Or Steven Spielberg made Jaws, then he made Duel. 
like something like that. It just, it's a weird order to the thing. And so it got me thinking and confused, but again, it's for all of the weird grainy film tricks. It's a very good looking movie and uh, you are never, you're never bored throughout the whole thing. And it is two guys just going nuts on each other. And uh, Willem Dafoe, I mean, he's not phoning it in. Willem Dafoe never phones anything in, but this, this is a performance that if you've seen Willem Dafoe before is not going to shock you too much. It's, you will be, it's basically you add it to the pile of Willem Dafoe. You are just one of the most amazing working actors. Robert Pattinson gets to be really, really crazy in this one. I have never seen the, uh, the Twilight films. The only Robert Pattinson movies I've ever watched are Cosmopolis and Maps of the Stars, the David Cronenberg films that he did. So those are weird enough to begin with, but he is, the, you know, for a man that pretty, he, can, he really brings a lot of crazy to a role. So I'm uh, very quietly excited about what he's going to do with this Batman movie. But yeah, The Lighthouse. I need to watch this again. I should watch it again. I'll watch it again soon. I'll watch it after this. Kashern by director Kazuaka Kiriya. Okay, I'm, I'm cheating a little bit with this one. This is technically his first feature-length film but he had been doing music videos for the previous five years, so he's not an inexperienced director. But this movie looks amazing. Like, it has production value at the wazoo, despite, or it has the look of production value at the wazoo. This is one of the, uh, the big all green screen movies that came out around the same time. Like, it was uh, Kashern, um, Sin City, Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow, and Ad Vitam. Uh, immortal. It was all, they were all made within like a year of each other and they all like almost exclusively use green screen backgrounds to have everything filled in together. And so all the actors are uh, acting in just this void with blocks to stand on, which uh, I can only imagine adds to the student film vibe to it. Uh, Kashern is based on the old 70s and 90s anime Kashan about a uh, cyborg who is uh, trying to stop an army of robots from taking over the planet Earth. And in this version, it's not that. <laughs> it's uh, What's interesting about Kashern the film is that it is a superhero movie that's not a superhero movie. Like, there is a superhero that is at the center of this movie, uh, Tetsuya Azama, or Azuma, rather, who is uh, killed in a phony baloney war at the beginning of the film, and he is resurrected in a super-duper body and put in the outfit of the uh, Kishern, Kishern from the anime, but he is not a cyborg, nor is uh, his enemy an army of robots. They are these Neo-Sapien people who have an army of robots, whereas before it was all just robots trying to destroy everything. As you can tell, everything is much more morally confusing and weird, which works perfectly for the look of this movie, which this one has the student film vibe like crazy because yes, every, all the backgrounds are fake, but there's so many different forms of media and art uh, uh, sprinkled throughout the movie. Like you know, we have the CGI backgrounds, we have like matte painting backgrounds, we have some stop motion in there. The CG is done by like a dozen different CGI houses, so nothing, no two shots look the same. And yet it all coheres together nicely because uh, you, you're presented with the society that's basically at the end of its tether. It's everything, the world is about to end. And so everything would be some futuristic, horrible hodgepodge that is light on plot, uh, heavy on character, but just stunning visuals throughout. Like you can't not just stare in bewilderment at everything that's going on. And so when we get action sequences, like the few that we get, they're very exciting and yeah, and well shot, but it's really all about moodiness and uh, hating yourself at the end of your life because you have ruined everyone around you and the world. That said, I watch it like once every couple of years. I never get tired of this movie. I watched it uh, about a month ago, which, you know, helped foster me wanting to do this triple feature. But, it, but considering how much uh, experience the director had, it, you would think that this would be an earlier film as opposed to a later film. So, 
that kind of ties together with that, even though it's his first film. Okay, I, I might be fibbing a little bit with this one. But who cares? It's my triple feature. And the three movies work together well, so there's also that. Finally, we have Alan Parker's adaptation of Pink Floyd's The Wall. Now, this one makes up for Kishern a little bit in terms of uh, Alan Parker had made like four or five different movies before The Wall, which is really kind of nuts. Like I said, it's a, an adaptation of the Pink Floyd double album where Roger Waters is venting his spleen about the uh, the horrors of being a famous rock star. Pink is, present, is played by Bob Geldof and presented as a guy who's completely burnt out on fame. Uh, he can't connect with anything, let alone his wife, who once she starts cheating on him because he's just not there, uh, he has a complete mental break and starts envisioning his rock himself, fascist leader, and his uh, rock concerts as Nazi rallies. And things only get weirder from there. This film features all sorts of different media. We have like traditional film, but we also have some, it, it, we also have a lot of animation. Like that's part of like the key. You have to have like mixed media of some sort to like really add the art student, art film studentness to it. And Alan Parker admits this stuff. He has acknowledged, or he, he, he's been quoted as like turning to Roger Waters or somebody and saying, we just made the most expensive student film I've ever seen. And the movie bounces between uh, this uh, Gerard, uh, animation by Gerard Scarf, which is uh, equal, it's like Ralph Steadman, but animated and more horrifying. Uh, we have all these, uh, uh, characters that, uh, because our main character is an unreliable uh, narrator or, uh, you know, at least uh, perspective of the film, people will be looking normal all of a sudden and then have these hideous masks on or all the sudden like start deforming in front of you. And that's when, well, and that's at the times when you don't have just, you know, the hammers marching down like uh, Nazi soldiers goose stepping and destroying everything. All to uh, what is my personal favorite uh, Pink Floyd album, because no, I can't relate to being a rock star, but man, if you've ever been lonely, uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall, really, uh, that, that'll, that's some good stuff to tap into to kind of feel a little bit, not less lonely, but definitely as if somebody else has been there before. But it's very, very bizarre. I mean, all of these movies, I'm trying, I'm talking about them and discussing what happens and some of the things you'll see in them, but really they have to be seen. You just have to watch them and experience them more than any other, more, more than other triple features where uh, there's, uh, you know, interesting connections. These are just three crazy ass movies that have higher budgets than you would expect for the type of movie there is, the type of movie that they are. And they're not bad, poor quality movies in any way, shape, or form in terms of plot or anything. It's just, there's an experiment, uh, experimentalness to the films that you wouldn't expect at that level of budget and at that point in these uh, directors' careers. But thank God they tried the things out and uh, they messed around with them uh, and, and they got the money to do it. Maybe I should have thought of it. Maybe I should. I should do like a separate triple feature just for Robert Zemeckis and all the times he's really gone, you know, out there on limbs playing around with different ideas because he, Robert Zemeckis, always has good budgets for those movies. Maybe we'll do that in the near future. But in the meantime, The Lighthouse, Kishern, and uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall. Watch those and, you know, take notes on what works and what doesn't for when you inevitably get around to making your movies.